In its heyday during the first and second centuries, Perga was one of the greatest cities in Anatolia. Behind me here is the Agora. This is the main market of the city. And uh, this would have been filled with vendors every day. This is where people came to shop. It was the outlet mall of ancient times. Uh, but take a look here, these columns. There's a whole hundreds of them in this city, hundreds of these columns. And what are they? They're granite. Now, some people you might hear around the internet saying things like, oh, well, do you know in the Greeks and the Romans, they were only able to make columns that were in sections. And it is true that the Greeks and Romans did make columns in sections sometimes, but they also had single block columns of granite, okay? This is a single piece of granite. Now, some of these have been broken and put back together, okay? But they were all single pieces of granite, okay? Yes, the Romans had a thriving granite industry, and they had many hundreds of these uh, in many cities around their empire. The Agora, the city's commercial center, sits just north of the theater, outside the Vespasian Arch. Check out these uh, monolithic granite pillars forming the outside of this temple. They tell you that, oh, they were so special and rare. They, meaning some YouTube channels. But actually, these kinds of columns were commonplace in the Roman Empire. These uh, granite columns here, this is Aswan granite. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in my Baalbek video. Uh, the Romans had quite the granite industry, but Egypt supplied them with some of the best single granite columns that there were. And uh, you can see they erected them here. But Aswan wasn't the only active quarry in the area where you could get granite. The Greeks weren't comfortable using granite, but the Romans used it quite a bit. They not only reopened the Egyptian granite quarries that had fallen out of use, but also opened up some of their own, new ones such as Mons Claudianus and Wadi Fawakir in Egypt, as well as several in Asia Minor, Italy, and Germany. A scientific study done recently analyzed 1,176 granite columns from the Roman era in seven regions around the Mediterranean and traced them to their original quarries. Yeah, 1,176 of them, and that's just a sample. They were taken from 126 different sites. Most of the granite production occurred between the 1st century BCE and the 4th century CE, with the peak during the 2nd century CE. Anyway, these granite columns were traced by geochemical analysis to 16 different quarries. But that list is incomplete. There's a handy website, the Oxford Roman Economy Project, and one of their databases is of stone quarries. You can filter by the type of stone, and there are 46 granite quarries that come up. 46, which were used in Roman times. Check it out if you get a chance. The overseas stone trade was a big and bustling industry. After marble, granite was the next most widely used stone for structural or decorative purposes in Roman times. It was worked in enormous quantities for the manufacture of columns, flooring and facing slabs, and large tubs. To show off their supremacy, the emperors made major spectacles of Roman engineering and organization by erecting magnificent structures. Even the convoy of stones and other building material commanded significant attention and was a source of pride to the emperors. As Roman elites moved into new territories acquired from the expansion of the Roman Empire, stone for building came in high demand, and even the local elites wanted to copy the Roman building style, which was very much in fashion. The Roman style was, of course, itself a copy of the Greek style. So yeah, granite was transported over long distances in the Roman period quite commonly. The Romans left us with information how columns were made, both in their writings and from what we see in the material evidence, like partially completed objects. First, quarrymen with iron picks outlined the general shape of the object they wanted to excavate. Then they drove in wooden wedges with mallets to force the stone loose. Alternately, they used the pointier method, making a straight line of small pits in the stone and then hammering back and forth between them using iron chisels. After getting the stone loose, Stonemasons would roughly shape it with iron chisels. By the way, the iron the Romans used was basically a low-grade steel. 
It was important that enough stone was taken off the column so that it could be transported more easily, but not so much that it could be damaged when moving. Once the object got to the site, smoothing was done using flat chisels or rasps, and then polishing would be done by abrasive stones or powders. There were different gradations of polish. The finer the abrasive, the finer the polish. Only certain stones were able to be polished, but granite is one of them. 